Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Guild Wars 1 Let's Play. This is the final episode of our Factions playthrough, as we have the final challenge mission here today. Amataz Basin? Amataz Basin? Yeah. So we'll be playing this one here today, this is the last one. Um, let's have a quick look around the outpost. This one is a protection mission, but it's different than the last one we did. You actually have to protect people as they go from place to place in this one, apparently, which is different. It's cool that all every mission is actually different, and they're not just, like, copy-paste. Um, apparently, Urgaz was supposed to originally appear in this mission, according to the Factions Guide. At least the wiki says that, so... This would have been the first showing of Urgaz, and I bet Kanaxi was supposed to show up in the other one to introduce you to the end game kind of bosses of these areas, which I will try to get to at some point. Um, it's going to be a little bit annoying. I'm going to have to find ways to do it. But I still have to edit that. I still have to do the voiceover for that Fissure Woe video. Oh my god, I just said I'd do that months ago. I am so sorry. I'll get that out at some point as well. But we're here to play this challenge mission today. Let's get in here. Um, notably, actually, the wiki mentions that hard mode is actually argue might be easier than normal mode since it levels up the people we have to protect quite a bit so i'm actually going to try this in hard mode and see if it does in fact make it a little bit easier or makes it easier yeah apparently these the people we have to protect during this mission um they're level 10 if you don't play it in hard mode if you play it in hard mode they're level 20 so supposedly that makes them quite a bit tankier Let's have a nice look around the outpost, um, a look around the area, that's a cool waterfall before the game actually starts. Um, pretty cool. Pond here. These stained glass with what I assume are different Kurzak heroes, I presume? I don't think those are supposed to be the gods. Um, there's a couple shrines here. Yeah, kind of a cool little area, a little bit more jungly. Again, we're in more of the living part of the forest. Oh no. A mistake was made. Yeah, these Kurzak refugees, they die a lot, f really pretty fast. So apparently we get points for each one that goes in. Um, similar to the last mission we did. And all the ones before it. We get a little bit of max faction cap raise if we get a certain amount of points. So we're going to try to do that here. Three more through. It looks like we get two points per refugee, so we need to get 50 through then. Yeah, I can't imagine if these guys were level 10. Yeah, the, the mobs are a level or two higher in hard mode, but by comparison, you know, you're making the mobs two levels higher, but you're only making the refugees, you're making the refugees 10 levels higher. Okay, so energy back, damn. Crit. There we go. This is a much smaller area than the other ones. I wonder what the intended way to play this is, because there is three portals, but I don't think you can actually split up into three groups. I don't. I don't think you'd actually ever be able to hold three at once. <clears throat> well, you would be able to, but I don't think you'd be able to like split up into a group of three. You'd have to run back and forth. 
Maybe they spawn in a certain order, like clockwise or something, but to my knowledge, they don't. Uh... I did put Splinter Weapon on again. That was something I remember to do from last episode. Not too bad. Obviously, if you had some way to, like, speed up the refugees, that probably would be the best thing to bring. You are getting a little bit overwhelmed on enemies, so I'm going to actually flag back and try to break some of those guys off. Or at the very least, have us not chain pull the new ones that are spawning there. I think the way to go is to try to just hard hold on one side. Especially if your goal is just to get like the 100 for the faction bonus. Occasionally one or two will slip in from the other sides. That looks like we finally broke the other sides. So we can just focus on getting these guys down. Yeah, it looks like fallback and incoming work on them, so that would have been good to bring. I'm just gonna kinda let all this keep going on out there. I wonder if you could pull all these mobs away to somewhere and then just tank them there. <laughs> I wonder if that's an option. Let's see if I can grab a pack or two here. Because we do have good AoEs, so if they're all... If they're bunched up and stuff... We might not make it. Uh oh, yeah, we hit. People are starting to die. That's bad. Uh oh, I did. 
Not good. Looks like they're gonna wave us here. Yep. Pretty bleh. Let's try this in normal mode and let's see what the difference is. Let's see if like the, the Kurzik dudes live a lot less or what's going on. We probably let them stack up a little bit too much there, but we can burn through them quick enough. Yeah, the Wardens are only like two levels lower, so I actually don't know how much easier they'll be. But the Kurziks, they die almost instantly, wow. I wonder if maybe in normal mode I'd be better, I'll be better off, uh, probably easily t yeah, it'll be more easy to move between the two areas, the three areas. Go to this side. It looks like these guys are balled up. Oh, let me make sure this guy gets killed up here. here. Stab. Where are these guys going? Come on, come back here, you.
Oh my god, the knockdowns from the freaking warden sucks. Oh my gosh. He does not cut through these guys quick enough. The trick is to probably try to get them to ball somehow. Like if you're doing this with a tank, probably a lot easier. Just run like a shadow form tank and just literally ball everything. Either that or you need more mobility. You need to be able to get around the map a bit quicker. Also, I probably have too much um, interrupts. I tend to overload on interrupts. But like... Despite the fact that I have 10 interrupts or something on my team, none of them got that shock move. So, sometimes they just don't do it. quite a bit harder than the others to get a hundred points in. The other ones are all quite easy. Stuff the ball to converse to.
Oh my gosh. Aggro some more. I think I just got primary defend this one and see what happens. Okay, we got some nice little time bones. I'll try something. I was trying to get them to ball up, but it's a little annoying with this terrain. Are they all seem to be individually grouped as like three? And some of them are individual as one because we killed off a member of their group. Get the casters, they have a pretty good chance of ruling the melees, it looks like. Yeah, I think the earth caster is the dead death sentence. Oh my gosh, another wave spawn. Just as I was running away. That's okay, right? Yeah. the time limit? I guess we hit the time limit. Interesting. I thought we still had a little bit left. I guess we're not going to get the 100 score in this. This one's actually quite a bit harder than the other ones. I don't know if that was intended or if it just kind of accidentally ended up that way. But yeah, even with good builds and stuff, it's relatively annoying to take down the wardens fast enough. Um, maybe with another anti-melee instead of an e-surge. Maybe we get there. But that's going to be the all for, all for today's episode. Um, this was our final episode in Factions. Not forever, but for a while. Um, we will be returning here, of course, whenever we get to um, Beyond, Guild Wars Beyond. Um, so I thought we'd just walk back to the, the old monastery here for a second. The ending shot. Um, but I want to thank you for coming out. I hope you have a great day. I will see you in the next one. We're going to be starting factions. That one might probably will be out tomorrow, but might not be. We'll see. But it probably will be. So look forward to that. And I hope you have a great day.